What's up, guys? Welcome to Stock Talk with Nico Criticos. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Enphase Energy, ticker ENPH, and we're going to do some analysis to find out if this is a good stock to buy and if it's a good time to buy this stock. So this was the first time I heard of this company this last couple of days while I was researching. And what this company does is they're involved in battery technology, energy storage, and the manufacturing and developing of something called a microinverter, which also has to do with storing energy, converting energy, and it pretty much makes the process more efficient. And then they also have uh, battery storage products as well as software. I think it's cloud software to help you track how your energy is being stored and how efficient it is and all that stuff. So that's number one. Now, if we look at the stock chart, we can see it's been very volatile the, these last couple of years. In 2018, the stock was $4. Today, it's 212 In the last year, the stock is still up 37%. And so it's definitely had a major run. To make it even more interesting, if we look at the PE ratio, we can see it's a 75 right now. And that's after falling all the way down from $332 a share. So let's take a look at my checklist here and find out what type of quality is this company? Number one, is their revenue increasing? And we also need to look at their net income. So revenue here, they've done a great job growing revenue. As you can see, it's gone from these levels of $100 million to in the most recent quarter, they did $630 million. So fantastic job there. Net income, eh, not as good, but there's definitely still some improvement that they made. So for years, they were losing tens of millions of dollars. Then in 2019, we saw them become profitable for the, for the first time. And in the most recent quarter, they did, let's see, $114 million of net income. So definitely some improvement, improvement made. And so both of those are going to get a check. Number three is looking at their price to earnings ratio. This one, I had, I had to really think about this one because this stock trades at a high PE ratio, but they are a fast growing company. And as you can see here, I put... The average EPS growth should be at least half of the Ford PE. And so in this case, the Ford PE is 39 and they have 23% growth, okay? If we want to take a look at what they're expected to do, we can see for revenue, they are expected to grow 36% this year and 28% next year. So definitely a strong growing company. As for EPS, we saw $4.6 last year, 5.4 expected this year, and 7.1 expected next year. So they have the growth there. The growth is there. But the valuation is definitely rich because we can see right now trading at a, this might be a little bit, let's refresh this. It's trading at a trailing PE ratio of 100 and a forward PE ratio of, that says 69, but it, it depends what number we're looking at here. And so... I think it's closer to this 39 number, which is right in line with right on the border of what I consider undervalued or overvalued. But although the valuation is a little bit rich, you're paying a premium price. They do have that growth there. So as long as they can keep up that growth and do similar numbers to what they're saying they're going to do for the next year or two, then that will um, that will work itself out. That'll It'll come back to a more reasonable valuation. Number four, are they innovative? Do they have a moat? Yes. What they're doing with the mic micro inverter is definitely innovative. I read a little bit about how it, it works better than traditional solar panels because it, you can extract more energy out of it and it doesn't waste as much energy, different things like that. So what they're doing is definitely innovative. Number five, it is a growing industry. Just for micro inverters, it's expected to grow 19% a year. So that is definitely a strong growing industry that they are in. Number six, how's their return on invested capital? I put no. If we want to get very specific here, we can see that their return on capital numbers are not the best. We're talking, you know, anywhere from 2% to, they did have a 12% here, but more recently it's been from 2% to 6%. So not the greatest. Then we're going to look at cash flow, and we will see here that they've also done a pretty decent job growing their operating cash flow. We will see in 2019, they did $139 million, then 200, then 350, and now we're up to $744 million of operating cash flow for the last 12 months. So very nice growth there. 
that will get a check. If you want to look at the other, I, I always I can sound half of that. And they financed, you know, a couple hundred million dollars between 2019 to 2021. And their free cash flow is also growing pretty nicely. So that will get a check. Do they have diverse reven revenue streams? I would say no. It's really just all about the solar industry, those micro inverters and battery storage, which I guess that is a pretty large and growing industry right now, but I don't really see them having too many different product lines. Like it's really just in that one industry. Number nine is the equity growing. Yes, it is. Let's take a look at equity. What you will see is in 2019, they had $272 million. And now today we're sitting at 825 million. So another great job there with growing equity. Is it over 15% of the market cap? Unfortunately not. That's another thing you got to bake into this to see that. Yes, they're doing a good job financially, but those numbers, but the valuation is just rich. I mean, $28 billion company and they have less than a billion dollars of equity. So you're definitely paying the price for it. Um, share count decrease? No, unfortunately not. They have been growing the number of shares outstanding. So definitely something not working in your favor, although it's not horrible. From 2020, 2021 till now, the last couple of years, it hasn't been horrible. It's kind of, it's pretty steady. So it's not the end of the world there. Number 12, do they have a healthy amount of debt? This one, I'm still, this criteria, number 12, I'm still narrowing it down to how specifically I want to make this. As of right now, we're just going to judge it off of, do I think they have a, a, a healthy amount of debt? But so again, 800 million in equity, current liabilities of 600 million, and then long-term debt of 1.2, right? So let's say it's around $1.8 billion. Well, they have 1.6 billion in cash. So I that's definitely okay with me. That I would definitely consider that healthy. That'll get a check. Number 13, this one I don't know a ton about because they're not, they, I need more history of the company to see how are they running it? Um, you know, what's their ROC numbers looking like, things like that. So I gave it a yes, because I haven't found anything wrong with the management and they're definitely doing a great job growing equity, growing revenue and net income. So I can't give that a no, because I haven't found anything wrong with it, but Definitely something that you that is subjective and you could find a different opinion if uh, you you know you do some research and, and look at it differently. Number 14, do they have more cash than their average annual income? Well, as we see here, $1.6 billion of cash. And meanwhile, they're doing only a couple hundred million in net income on average, anywhere from you know 130 million to 400 million. So that'll get a check. Do they have a dividend? No. And are they over 20 years old? No, they are not. They were founded in 2006. So all in all, this will get a 10 out of 16. I'm not considering it a buy. If it was to, a couple of things would have to happen. One, they would either have to get better numbers for return on invested capital, or they would have to come down as far as valuation goes. I think that's the big thing. The need, They need to, the valuation needs to come down a little bit. It's trading a little bit at a rich value. Um, but other than that, I think it's a decent company that has a decent future ahead of it. And there's definitely some potential there. So you just got to watch out for the valuation. And I still think for, for me in this type of industry, even though I'm a big shareholder of Tesla, I think this battery storage and solar energy type of business, those type of businesses don't, it's, I feel like it's too early on. So there's a lot that can happen and I need to see a little bit more execution and a little bit more proof before I make a final decision. As of right now, it's not something I'm super interested in, but it's, it's something that to keep an eye out for and see what happens. So thank you for watching. That is Enphase Energy and I will see you in the next video.